<laughs> love you, Mr. Woody. Oh, you love me? <laughs> <laughs> I love Miss Rob Coleman Williams, boy. Let me know when to start, Ross. Okay, we are starting right now. Take okay. it away, Janie. Uh, hi, my name is Janie D. Washington, and I'm the workshop coordinator here at New Federal Theater. And welcome to the uh, beginning acting class presentation of How People Lock Down. But before we start, I would like to acknowledge a few people who are involved in New Federal Theater's uh, organization. Uh, first of all, Woody King Jr. Hello, everybody. Yay. <laughs> Pat, Pat White, Karima, uh, Carl James, uh, the board of directors, NFTs, uh, teaching instructors. And also, I'd like to give a special shout out to the basic acting uh, instructors, um, Mary Hodges. Eric Coleman, Nora Cole. Here, here. Uh, Sylvester. Uh, and uh, most importantly, Rosalind Coleman for putting this <laughs> together. Uh, also, we do have a Tuesday and June series. And at the end, we will share a little more information about that. Uh, with, for, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Roz. Welcome everybody. I am so happy to be with you um, in this way. So what I like to say is that under these difficult circumstances, we as artists must insist upon performing our craft in hopes of touching someone. And that's what we want to do today. To quote our cast member, Nicole O'Connor, no virus not racism or COVID can keep us from our desire to serve through the craft of storytelling and performance. To the audience, I wanna say thank you so much for, for going on this ride with us. Um, something unexpected may happen, we don't know, but uh, that's just like live theater, so there you have it. Um, to make this experience work for everyone and to enjoy the show, there are a couple of things you need to do. One is you need to turn off your video camera. So during, for the next 30 minutes, you'll be watching. So if you could turn off your video and also if you could turn off your audio for the next 30 minutes. Um, if you feel moved to chat, to use the chat feature during the performance, just go ahead and use it. And at the end of the performance, we ask that you stay, stay for five minutes because we'd like to know how the performance impacted you. We'd love to you, for you to turn on your camera, turn on your audio. We wanna hear from you. And we'd like to know how is your lockdown going? I need to say that we are currently broadcasting live on YouTube. So if you're in the witness protection program, you might wanna keep your, <laughs> keep your video down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, at this point, it is my pleasure to welcome Nicole, Vincent, Shani, Shananyaram, um, uh, Felicia, and Roy into the craft of theater. Everybody turn off your video. How the People Locked Down, a pandemic dramatization. Acting class, New York City. Time, before March 13th, 2020. A monologue from Shakespeare's Othello. But I do think it's their husband's fault if wives do fall. Say they slack their duties and pour our treasure into foreign laps or else break out in peevish jealousies, throwing restraints upon us. 
or say they strike us or scant our form or habit in despite. Why? We have calls. And though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge? Let husbands know their wives have sons like them. They see and smell and have their palates for both sweet and sour as husbands have. What is it they do when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breathe it? I think it doth. It's frailty that does errs. It is so oh, too. And have we not affections, desires for sports and frailty as men have? Then let them use us well, else let them know. The ills we do, their ills instruct us so. Time, March 14th, 2020. It's a bright sunny day in New York City when Governor Cuomo comes on television to declare a state of emergency. People are on the streets, texting, calling, making their way home. New York is on pause. This is the apocalypse. This is the apocalypse. This is the apocalypse. Felicia, a city nurse at Bellevue Hospital, is seen walking up the drive toward the staff entrance. She's been on call for the last 24 hours and has only had a few moments of sleep. The sound of an incoming ambulance is deafening. She punches in and walks down the long hallway to the changing room. My stomach twists and my fingers shake as I prepare to work the battleground. The place I've always loved and felt at home is now a field of droplets sprayed across a room lurking on a handle or a sink to find their way inside our mouths or nose or eyes. The ones that touch you when you're sick speak soothing words and seek an answer to your pain. I stretch my purple gloves on steady hands. I tie my yellow gown behind my back, my hair inside my blue bouffant. My eyes and nose and mouth are still and calm inside their waiting shield. This is the apocalypse. Being laid off from the Starbucks on 59th Street, Roy decides to take the long way home from Central Park. A daffodil poked his head up from the dirt and it opened sunny arms to bluer skies, yet I am filled with dark and anxious dreads as theaters close and travel ends and grocery stores display empty rows where toilet paper, liquid bleach, and bags of flowers stood in its upright ranks. As spring begins and again, and brightly colored flowers deploy in my backyard, the neighbors walk their dogs and march along the quiet streets. This is the apocalypse. And the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played and learned new ways of being. The people were still and listened more deeply Someone meditated, someone prayed, someone danced, hey. <laughs> and someone met their own shadow. 
and people started thinking differently. Up in the Bronx, Linda, an actress wannabe, decides to try out a few dating apps. Hey. So I just wanted to say that this month together has been absolutely amazing. And you're like everything that I could have ever imagined. So I just wanted to say, um, do you want to take things? Why do you keep talking over me? Like I'm trying to tell you how I feel, but you're just showing me your muscles, which are absolutely beautiful, but that does not excuse the fact that you're still talking over me. I can't believe I put on a decent shirt on for you today and like makeup. I should have listened to my mom when she said I shouldn't be on these stupid dating apps. You know what? I think I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna head out. Wait, what did you say? Oh my God, I'm on mute. I'm on mute. Um, hey babe, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I think I love you too. Costco on 116th, after waiting two hours in line at the proper social distance, of course, a man shared some reality. Senior citizen shopping cart is filled with only one item. Big Papa, hey man, what you got there? I see, if you need 144 rolls of toilet paper, for a 14 day quarantine, you probably should have been seeing the doctor long before Corona got here. I know that's right. Now out on Long Island, Roy stops his garbage truck when he sees a family setting up their lawn for a quarantine graduation ceremony. Hey. I got something for you guys. I believe the children are future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. I lost two daughters to a car accident, but I'll tell you this, when I see you girls do what you guys do, I celebrate. People just see me in that old garbage truck but I keep on trucking. I still have one daughter, the one twin, and I have two sons. I lost my baby daughter her junior year, and I lost her big sister that was going to visit the other twin in a car accident. It's worth it. You gotta keep going. My one daughter, she went back and she got her master's, and now she is one of the directors of at Riverside Community Hospital. So make your family proud. I had to get up, but that's life. You can do it. So make your family proud and keep on trucking. Shaniqua, grateful that her job at Trader Joe's keeps her fully stocked in chocolate hummus and organic carrots, just found out the DJ Nice dance party that has helped her sweat the loneliness away won't be on Instagram tonight. Let's see what's on Instagram. No DJ, no D nice. No club. No. 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 No, no, no. No. What about us? Huh? What about us? You you got us all hooked on your music. This is a safe space. Four days? You gonna leave us for four days? What we gonna do? Thinking about you and all the... How you gonna leave us for four days? We going through withdrawals, man. What we gonna do? You coming back? What we gonna do? There's a pandemic. We need you. 
you know what? I, I, I need to go for a walk. Where's my mask? I gotta go. Savannah has been locked down on Staten Island with her husband for four weeks. She checks in with her circle of friends on Facebook. Hi, guys. Um, with all that is happening around the world. Well, Felicia, move, your, move the thing in front of you. Your camera's blocked. Oops, oops. <laughs> Hi, guys. <sighs> with all that is happening around the world, I just want to talk to you guys and tell you that we are all in this together. And it's they already, I don't know, a thousand? Home with my husband? And it's been great. You know, we just realized how much we have in common with each other. And you know what? I am loving every second of it. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know how to genuinely express myself on this. I am having the time of my life. I, you know what? I, I just wish everyone would stay home and watch Netflix. I mean, come on. Who doesn't like Love is Blind? 6 p.m. Enter the school day. Mrs. Larkley has been going out her way to teach her public school students online. Look, online learning, distance learning, whatever you want to call it, Google Classrooms, Ingenuity, USA Test Prep, Zoom, Kahoot, all of it's unnecessary. I'd rather be back in my classroom than to deal with all of this. How do you feel about online learning? You mean, how do I feel about being 10 feet from my bed, but can't get in it? I call it torture. Set up a password for the kids, set up schedules for the kids, set up our schedule, have a virtual team meeting. Why? Did y'all just come up with all this stuff yesterday? Now y'all know, half these kids don't have no internet and almost all the kids don't have laptops. So what kind of games are y'all playing for real? And if it's not a requirement, then why are teachers required to do everything? Look, see me? That's why I require liquor. You say. Sister Naisha is giving hope and love to her followers, though her attempts are challenged by her technical difficulties. Is this thing on? Peace and love, brothers and sisters. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. Welcome to my life. Now, where was I? Oh yeah. And the people heal. And in the absence of people who lived in ignorant ways, dangerous, mindless, heartless, the earth began to heal. And when the danger ended and the people found themselves, they grieved for the dead and made new choices, dreamed new vision and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully, just as they had been healed. Mm. Yes, sister. Reverend Vincent, he paints a beautiful and broad picture of the creation by James Weldon Johnson. 
to comfort and and maybe to distract his congregation just a little. Yes. And God stepped out on space. He looked around and he said, I am lonely. I'm gonna make me a world. And as far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights, down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled and the light broke and the darkness rolled up on one side and the light stood shining on the other. And God said, that's good. Then God reached out and took the light in his hands and he rolled the light around in his hands until he made the sun. And he set that sun ablazing in the heavens. And the light that was left from making the sun, God rolled it up in a ball and flung it against the darkness, spangling the night with the moon and the stars. And then down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world and God said, that's good. Amen. May 28th, 2020, Governor Cuomo interrupts a morning talk show to give his daily numbers. New York City has lost over 38,000 friends, family, coworkers, and neighbors. And the people who remained are not sure if it's time to end the lockdown. I don't know what we should do. What do you think that we should do? I think that we should stay indoors. Yeah, you should stay your ass indoors. Yeah, you should stay your ass indoors. And even though you're getting bored, you can leave your house no more. You better stay your ass indoors. You better stay your ass indoors. And even though you're getting bored, you can leave your house no more. So, stay indoors. Stay, stay indoors. Yay! Everybody can unmute themselves. <laughs> and join us. Share your video. Bravo. Bravo, bravo. Bravo. Yes, congratulations, everybody. Hey. Hi, T. Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, yes, please ask a question. This is the time for questions and talking. Yes, Stephanie. Besides um, Shakespeare and creation, who wrote these? <laughs> um, oh yeah, I oh. forgot. I was gonna share that with you. Um, I, um, it, these are collected from, the students brought them in from people that they heard on the internet ah. who were monologuing about our current situation. But as well as there was a poem. Who wrote that poem? The couple of poems. Who wrote the poems, ladies? Katie O'Hara. Katie O'Perry. And Apollo. Yeah, and Nora, she she presented that to us. Great question. Because <laughs> it covered the, the whole spectrum of all the different experiences we're having. So it's yeah. it's a concept that you can like do over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yes. So, um, Roz, it's Nora. Nora, hi. Hi, hi Nora. Nora. Hey, guys. Hi, hi Nora. <laughs> so, hi, the apocalypse too. poem was actually 
uh, uh, from the New York Times, a poem in the Times that uh, a doctor wrote that was her journey through the pandemic. And one of the other pieces was written in the 1800s by a poet through another pandemic. Mm. It's amazing how it holds up. Oh, man. Yeah. You guys were great. Yes. <laughs> Hi, teacher. Hey, hey. <laughs> now, how long have you guys been working with Miss Ross? Three? No, four weeks. Three weeks. Wow. You're kidding. Three weeks. Three weeks. Has it only been three? Three. Oh, three man. weeks? You did three this weeks. in three weeks? Three four weeks total. Weeks. We did some extra rehearsals to allow for um, the challenges. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's amazing. It's terrific. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Roz, what was the, um, this is this is a question for the actors. What was the, you know, process for you um, in taking the material, you know, from the beginning uh, and then, you know, getting it ready for performance? Um, you know, some of the material, you know, was, was created beforehand, but what would, what did you have to, what did you have to do to kind of get it to where, you know, it is now? I would, I would, I would say good direction and practice. Yeah. Our instructors really had us work through the pieces. Yeah. And courses and yeah, and see what, um, communication, I would say, was like what got the piece together. You know, we all um, picked our individual pieces. And then when Ross was able to look at it as a collective, she was able to kind of like, you know, place, you know, where something should go. So just kind of communicating like what pieces we wanted to do and just sending it back to Ross. That was really, really key in our performance. I think kind of coming together in a collaborative setting. Um, for, for And the people healed, both Roz and Nora basically had us emphasize what we were feeling, what are people feeling during the pandemic, stressing on the words, whether they're verbs, adjectives, and then, of course, a collaborative effort from the team and other coaching that we also received. That's awesome. That's awesome. And she never let us quit. I would say she never let us quit. <laughs> um, when it got scary, when it got tough, through the process, wanted to quit. <laughs> she, every step of the way, baby steps, encouraged us, loved us, and I just love her. And put us um, in our place when we needed to be put. <laughs> yes, Vincent, yes, pushed. When another, another that great thing <laughs> that Roz, I feel like, um, told us, or that really stuck with me is that, to help me get out of my head, it's, it's about the audience and it's about serving the people and that we are here to serve the audience. And it's not about, you know, us worrying about how good we are, what we're doing. It's about really showing up in the roles and embodying them and, and so that somebody out there can see them showing. So that was awesome. Cool. Stephanie. Now, did you all choose your own stories or were they assigned? Both, Both yeah. <laughs> Um, a few pieces. Oh, go ahead. Sure. Uh, we bought a few pieces, and then Roz would just kind of like narrow it down, and then from there we're able to kind of like bring back some pieces, and then she would kind of tell us like give us more feedback, and then like we kind of work together with Roz in, in terms of like you know what piece we would use for the final uh play. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are a great audience. Um, does anybody want to ask one more question before we? Yes, Randy. Oh, no, two. Randy, then Michael. Um, wanted to know, Roz, like, you know, what was it, what was the process like for you uh, directing, you know, over Zoom? You know, what are some of the things, you know, what are some of the changes that you had to make as a director? What are some of the things that you had to do as a director that you normally wouldn't do if you were directing them in the same room or, or, or face to face? I definitely felt like I had to have more patience <laughs> because you really have to realize that you're asking someone to work on both sides of their brains at the same time to look and mute themselves as well as to embody this character. And I felt like the actors really, 
really stood up to the challenge, no matter where they were technically or artistically, they moved up. But it's a big challenge because I can't control their environment, mm. like what their house looks like or, or what, you know. So there's so many things that are out of my control. I tried to focus on what I could control, but I was very nervous and they made me very proud. Nice. Michael. <laughs> Michael then Ben. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Thank you. That that was a great um, show. I was wondering from the actors, if you, for those that have been in, performed in theater before, how did you find the difference be between performing on stage as opposed to doing it in a Zoom live sort of feed? Well, I, I've never done like theater before, but I performed on stage capacity of the music and I would say it was helpful to actually have people here because of the big thing with stage you can feel the audience and they're there that give, it's an energy exchange. and so while we were nervous about doing it on zoom Roz was very adamant about us inviting people and having people come so that we can feel your energy um and so it, it's not the same as being live but it helped it definitely helped. Can we hear? And this, and this is a good way for us to get get feedback, direct direct feedback, <laughs> as opposed to waiting for to read comments. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice to hear from you. I thank you guys all. Um, anybody else? Oh yes, please, Ben. Before we hi say hi, hi. Um, hi ben. Michael actually spoke to the issue that was most on my mind, um, and that is you know the challenge of doing it in isolation. For a medium that's designed to be interactive and immersive. So I do applaud, that's, that's a gutsy thing. It's, we've been developing pieces since March um, with the same you know, process and it's, it's a challenging one. You know, you're trusting a, a little telephone camera <laughs> to, be, to be the world of your um, sharing of your, of your performance. So that's no small thing. So you know, you, you gotta trust a lot and we applaud that. I also really appreciated the range of the piece, um, the comedies and the dramas and the classicisms and all of that. I mean, it was really, you know, quite an undertaking. So you guys should feel um, very good about <clears throat> the approach for today's work. And it was just the right one. Keep biting into you know all that you have good teachers obviously good direction you know and um, the ranginess was wonderful so thank you so much it was a, a nice evening <laughs> on a Saturday yeah. night. Thanks. Roz Woody's here. Okay. Oh Woody, put, put my picture on. Mr. Woody, where you at? Mr. Woody, come on. Well, let me put your picture on. Let me help you put your picture on. Um, hold on. Hold on. Is there an after party? <laughs> <laughs> a virtual wait, wait, wait. virtual <laughs> let me get woody's picture uh where is he woody 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 okay and that's another thing i had to no, uh, I had to. ask to start video yeah okay yeah. see if that works woody okay let me. start video okay lower left lower left corner uh, woody. oh there yeah. you go yeah. woody. yes you're on we see you okay can you hear me Yes. 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 Hear you. Okay. I, I just want to say it was like wonderful. I mean, it, the workshop was wonderful, and uh, uh, the pacing and the narration and all that was great. Great. It's like acting for television, uh, <laughs> in a sense. It's acting for television, but it's not. And Roz, I know you are very, very experienced uh, in um, television and movies, and so you could give them some of that. Uh, a brother who did uh, God, from God's trombones and God stepped out on the world. Uh, I thought that was very well done. And the singers, you know? Uh, so, Roz, it was cool, man. Hey, June. Very nice. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much. That means the world to us. And Roz, I, I, I also want to say that, like, it was so nice to, um, I, I really, it really felt like a theatrical experience. Um, yes. Just to, you know, just in terms of the kind of intimacy and connection 
you know, that you get from theater. I felt like I, you know, got that same kind of, or, or similar kind of, in, you know, intimacy and connection with the performances. I actually loved how instead of um, having the actors, um, you know, mute or unmute their video, they put like, you know, shades or curtains <laughs> over the cameras. And because I felt like that made it, you know, more oh, <laughs> like, like the theatrical experience. Yeah. Um, and I also think that it was re also really great. I mean, this was, it was so black, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I like that you had a program. Everyone from the, you know, from from all the from all the fly wigs to like the, yeah, the costumes, everything. Going to the D nice party, and then she like put the onks on her ears. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the, you know, the root sister. I just yeah. like, it's so yeah, nice. a program too. I like that. Yeah, it's just so yeah. nice to be able to to experience the culture in this way. As I feel like, in addition to the drama and the connection. Like all of you, you know, all of you brought the culture to the forefront, um, you know, kind of like in the tradition of New Federal, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, which, which has been, you know, obviously doing this for decades, but it was just nice to, to, to experience that despite the fact that we're all going through, you know, this challenging season. So I just, you know, I, I really want to thank you guys for bringing the culture in the way that you did, really pouring yourself into that. Thank Rob, you. Well said. Rob, yes. I want to say individually to Shani, to Chanayaram, to Roy, to Nicole, to Felicia. Who else? Who did I miss? Nani. Vincent. Nani. Um, I am proud of all of you. I am glad that you stuck with it, that you mm -hmm. continued your classes. Much love to all of you guys, that you continued the class. I can see the work. I can see the work and thank you, Roz, for your directing and putting it together the way that you did. It's awesome. It's awesome. Love you guys. Love you, Dean. All right. Thank thank you, Dean. Roz. Yeah. Dean. Uh, yes. hi. Just, hi, Dean. Hello. Hey, hi, folks. Um, hey. Just kudos to all hi, involved. Dean. That was hey, that was wonderful. Um, the 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 big challenge of of working on Zoom and you know, having it thrust upon us like it is now, you know, is how do you connect? How do you connect to people, you know, and really, really use that lens to, to, to connect to people who are blocks and miles away, you know? And you guys did that. That was wonderful. That was great. That was great. <laughs> uh, and that's the, that's the big challenge, you know, of how do we maintain that kind of uh, relationship? you know, to your partner and, and to whomever you talk, to your audience, you know, that you do not see, you know. Um, but, you know, working in isolation like this, I think is just gonna be something that we're gonna have to get used to and um, add it to our repertoire, you know, of experiences. <laughs> and you guys are definitely well on your way to doing that. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you Dean. Yes. Also, also, I just wanna add, uh, the repertory of work that you've chosen, that you chose from, it gives you a wide view of American literature and European literature and classical literature. And I just think, Roz, that's invaluable. So if you don't read all of Othello and get halfway through it, you can say, whoa, man, I got to go back to this. <laughs> if, I don't, if you don't read all of God's trombones, you, oh, wow, I got to go back to James Weldon Johnson. You know what I mean? Uh, it uh, gave you a heads up. And uh, most of us really didn't get that heads up in acting classes. You had to do a scene, and you did that scene, and you worked with that scene until it was complete, and uh, you go to another scene. But I think, that, I think that's uh, valuable. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful. I feel so full and happy that you guys received this. Yeah, it feels like a wonderful way to wrap it up. You want to take it away, Ajane? Thank you, everyone. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, this is a wonderful experience. But I'm going to do a PR thing right quick. Uh, Woody, uh, yeah. could you share a few? Uh, 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 well, say a few words about the uh, 
Tuesday and June three. Okay, uh, Pat, is you yes. are you here? Yes. Okay. Um, every year for the last five ten years, we've been doing Tuesdays in June, and this year we're doing uh, Tuesdays in June with not plays but with conversations with artists talking about their crafts and how they work together and what they did and some, yeah, of, the things, and some of the things that um, um, uh, they experienced in working together. For example, the first one, rapping. Uh, rapping with Ipeta, artists. Uh, uh, Ipeta Murkison, Ruben Santiago Hudson. Barbara, Barbara Montgomery. Barbara Montgomery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sort of like the host on that. And Elizabeth Van Dyke will be host, but everybody can chip in. There'll be questions afterwards. And there's one every Tuesday, June 2nd, June 9th, June 16th, June 23rd, and June 30th at 3 o'clock p.m. So it's, it's an unusual thing. You can go to our website and get information. Uh, Pat, Jane, are you going to send them the, uh, you'll send them the flyer? The, uh, yes, yes, okay. I will send them the flyer. And you can go to our website. We're also going to be doing two readings. We're going to do a reading of um, Two Can Play, which we were in the process of doing and we had to close. So we'll get to see what happened in the end. And we're doing uh, Looking for Leroy, which was the uh, play we did last year that won six Adelco Awards. So that's, what we, and those are seven o'clock, one on the 16th and one on the 30th. Okay. Our website, I think, is uh, www.newfederaltheater.com. Okay. And thank you all, too, for your contributions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and I you. guess with that, does anyone else have anything to say? <laughs> no. Yeah, you gotta, you guys, you you guys just saw those wonderful artists. <laughs> Roy, yes, sir. Roy, I just think. Okay, I know I'm speaking out of line, and you gotta direct it. Who's Roy? Keep your beard. Keep your beard. Okay. You got a great future in this. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. you. Got a great future in this business, man. And I know we've I've been around a long time. <laughs> you know, Roz's dad and I went to high school together. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's uh it's amazing, you know. And a Janie um is there, Pat's there, and I'm there. You know, when you call in, call in, want to know something, just ask us. You know, one of the three of us will answer it. I can answer it. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, Vincent. Vincent, you did God's trombones? Okay. Is he here? Did he leave? Hey, muted. Yourself, I'm here. Oh, here he is. Yeah. There you are. Yes, sir, I did. Okay. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> all right well okay, thanks guys yeah on that note i'll end and um if you want to watch it back it'll be on my youtube channel right. Coach right. YouTube. Right. is the question right. answer doing also recording yes the whole oh, thing great. Wow. you guys were wonderful <laughs> have a wonderful evening you, you my heart is full thank you Woody. amen thank you, thank you, amen. Thank amen. you. Thank thank you everyone you. Bye. 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 Hey, Nora. Hey, Mr. King. <laughs> hey, Dean. <laughs> Everybody, Pat. Hi, Nora. Hey, hey, guys. Felicia, good work. Felicia, good work. Wow, man. Everybody. Shout yeah, everybody. Everybody. Jen, everybody. Nicole. Donnie. Nora. 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 <laughs>